Hi, my name is John Humphreys, and I'm going to show you a little tutorial on how to use Apache Maven within the IntelliJ IDE. What you learn here should be useful for other IDEs as well, anywhere you're going to develop with Maven, basically. And it can use languages other than Java, although that is the one we will use. Maven, just to give you a refresher, is a dependency management tool and a build tool. It basically lets you state which libraries you need to use in your project, and it will pull them in automatically and build them and link them and make sure that all the versions resolve properly. And if there's any conflicts, it'll report them when you build so that you can do something about them. It also has a series of plugins, which can do really cool things like run embedded Jetty servers or compile new JavaScript standards to old ones so they can use them all browsers, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Anyway, um, we'll go into IntelliJ now and create a new Maven project. Any version of IntelliJ should be fine, but I'm running 15.0.2, which is the new one. So we'll say new project. And when the window comes up, we'll tell it to build a Maven project from an archetype. An archetype is a predefined project template. The template can contain anything, basically, that somebody has built before. So it could be something really amazing, like uh, giving you a Spring MVC application that's ready to be deployed to a web server like Tomcat that's already got Hibernate built in and all the inner workings for being able to associate with MySQL or some other database. Or it could be something really simple, like just having a few folders or whatever. We're going to use the quick start archetype in this case, which is provided by Maven by default. And it basically just gives you a source slash main slash Java and source slash main slash resources plus equivalent test directories. The only extra dependency it builds in by default is JUnit because it gives you one hello world class and one test class for it. So we'll tell it to create this project. For the company name, we're going to do com dot whatever your name is dot YouTube. That's just the base packages for what's going to be your program, so you don't get name collisions with other ones. And for the artifact ID, we'll just say MT for Maven tutorial. And next, we're going to use the bundled Maven and everything, so you can skip past this. And for project name, I'll just call it MT again, so it matches up to the other thing. This is mostly for IntelliJ's benefit. Let finish, and we'll tell it to take over the window it's already in. And now it's actually creating the project from us for the template. The first thing that you see is a enable auto import window. This is really important because you want to tell it to enable auto import. That way, changes you make to the project object model, which we'll go over in 30 seconds, get auto imported. So this way, if you add a new dependency like string escape utils, which is one we're going to use for this demo, it'll be automatically imported into your computer and ready for your build without you having to ask for anything. So we're going to click Enable Auto Import here. And what you see in front of you, now that we've auto imported, is it pulled in the JUnit dependency. And basically, we have our POM project object model, which is essentially our Maven config file for this project. You'd usually have one per module if you had a project with many modules or something. But you don't need to worry about that for now. So this is pretty cool. If we go in and look at the directories on the Solution Explorer over here, we can see it made a Hello World program, and it made a test program. Or, sorry, Hello World class and test class. And they're all ready to run with all the dependencies. You just right-click and hit Run. You see it building at the bottom here. It's doing a make. Then it's going to take over this window over here and do the compilation and show you all the steps that Maven does. In this case, it's just going to basically execute the program. Um, and if we go to the test, we can see that it's using JUnit. We see extends test case here. If we go to the imports, we should see it pulling in JUnit classes. This is all from the library. It pulled down automatically for us. Now, to show you how to add a new dependency, which is the whole point of this, Let's go to the main and do something interesting. We'll create a very simple HTML paragraph. So 
So we see that it's includes the normal HTML tags and everything. And let's pretend you're making a website and you want to show this because you're making a coding website. I don't want it to render the paragraph. I want it to leave the P yada yada on the page for you to see as a developer to learn. So I have to somehow tell HTML to not render this as a paragraph. And you do that by escaping it. So what we can do here is go pull in the string escape utils library. You would have found that in 10 seconds on Stack Overflow if you looked around. And if you just Google any class name and the word maven, you'll come up at this page, usually on Google, within the first two links. This one lets you find the dependency in a various set of build tools, most of which all depend on maven. And you can copy the dependency straight out, and you can put it inside your project object model, right next to the JUnit one that was already there. If you do this, you were really fast and see that it pulled in stuff at the bottom here and re-indexed them. That means it's already got it and it's ready to use it because we had auto import on. So now we can go back to here and instead of printing out hello world, which isn't that interesting, we could print out string escape utils. See, it already knows it's there. The IDEs found it because Maven imported it. Dot, and we can say escape HTML4. Be nice if it's HTML5, but don't worry about it much here. And now when we run, by the way, I ran with control shift F10. That's the shortcut. That's why you didn't see me right click there. It's rebuilding. You'll see it pull down a new library if you're really fast here and give some new warnings. And we see the output is properly encoded HTML, which is fantastic. So we literally pulled down and used a new library there. Maybe manage the class path to build and everything. That is a real blessing if you've ever dealt with doing this stuff manually. It's not fun. Uh, the last thing we'll cover here, which is important, is how to open the Maven Projects window. You saw me there, I did a little fast. You wanted to go to Tool Windows, under View, and then Maven Projects. This provides you your way to manage Maven. You can access your plugins under your module and the lifecycle stages under the module. Plugins would be the things that do really cool stuff like running embedded Jetty servers or compiling JavaScript code between uh, language editions and stuff like that. There's a million plugins, they do really powerful things, and if you use these, they're compatible between IDEs because it's all Maven driven and not IDE specific, which is awesome. Um, before we actually do a build in a slightly different way, I'm gonna show you this too. This wrench tool up here, this is the Maven settings. There's all sorts of interesting stuff in here that you can browse through later, but the main point is that if you have trouble, or you want to use a different version of Maven, or if you have a repository somewhere else, you should go in here and play with it. This is how you're going to fix things. So here's the last thing we're going to do. This lifecycle set of steps is basically, these are all goals, and when you execute a goal, different things happen, but the clean one lets you wipe out everything in your target directory. So if you look over here, there's no target directory in the Solution Explorer right now. When you run other goals, like validate, compile, test, package, verify, install, site, or deploy, it actually runs everything from validate up. So at this point, if I run install, which is the main thing that you usually run to build things, it's going to do everything except for generate site, which usually is reserved for making Javadoc sites and stuff automatically, and aside from deploying it. Deploy would be like pushing it to a web server automatically. So most people don't do these things, so install is your usual goal. It'll run everything up to that. So if we run install, we're going to see it go do all the build steps again down here. More than you saw before, because it implicitly did some for us originally. And we see it pulling everything in. You can go read the steps. It's really intuitive and comprehensive. And basically, you're going to see it compile, build, and then you're going to see it run tests, which is interesting, so we didn't see that before. So when you do install, it implicitly does the test step up here. We see it passed our tests because we didn't change them, and frankly, the test built into this archetype just does assert true. But now you see how it all works. So the important part is you can create a Maven project, no matter how complicated, from any archetype, very quickly. And now you know how to pull in new dependencies and manage your build and invoke any plugins that you happen to desire. 
So thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel to see other interesting information for Java and other programming languages and anything else that happens through right here. I appreciate your time and have a good day.